to a quick video overview of designing your national park. Now there are four different maps you can start from that might be of interest. You also might be able to, once you're in the website, find other maps that might bring you to other parts of the world, including oceans or lakes that might be of interest to you. But for now, we're really thinking about designing a national park within the continental United States. You have areas of unprotected biodiversity importance, so this would be land that's currently not protected, that has a lot of biodiversity that's imperiled, endangered, or threatened. You have a map looking at where pollinators are at risk of being extinct, vascular plants that are at extinct, and again, these are two species that currently don't get enough attention or protection because they're not cute, cuddly, charismatic animals. And then finally, a total sum invert, uh, a total sum map of all of the um, endangered or threatened species under the ESA. Now, for the space below, you're just going to be taking screenshots with specific layers that might be proposing a specific area that demonstrates both the need and space for a national park to exist. I'll show you how you can do that in a second. Additionally, once you have your location, you're going to need to start thinking about endangered or threatened species in that area that you think are going to be of note in why you're creating a national park. You're going to be thinking about their trophic level, what they require for their niche, this could be biotic or abiotic requirements, their territory, their natural predators or pathogens, negative human interactions that they experience, what ecological services that they provide, this would be a good recap of the first module in chapter 18, and cultural and economic values that might heighten the necessity for your park. So I have opened already the richness of imperiled species, the fourth map. And when I look at this map, and I look at, I want to be looking at the sequence. Nope, I want to be looking at this. Sorry, we'll be going over some of these tools later on. We don't need to worry about them right now. We can see that we have a variety of different parts in the United States that have different levels of endangerment. And when I am looking at this key and show properties, I can see that there are places that have at least 31 discrete specific species that are endangered. We have this area here. This looks like a lot of waterways. We have some small areas in the New York suburbs and we also have some locations more in California. So I might be proposing that my national park exist sort of in the San Diego area. Um, now, with layers, you can start thinking about either factors or reasons or conditions that might exist that are causing such levels of extinction and or the necessity for the national park. To add layers, you're gonna be going over here and looking at different layers that you can search. By searching here, you can also go into these three levels right here called a filter, and you can look at categories, regions, and also things like the type or the tags that you might be able to see. So a couple things that I have found in terms of layers that I think are really important. One is intact habitat corridors. So notice right off the top, I might start thinking about proposing a specific national park, thinking about this area right here or this area based on the fact that they have a lot of intact habitat. And maybe this right here would be an area that I might think of conserving more. What other layers did I find? I put power plants in the United States, and this will show me a key to think about all the different power plants. Specifically, power plants I might be really concerned about would be related to, let's look at our key, anything that's related to coal, or nuclear, or natural gas, or wind, or even solar might be causing a variety of issues. And if I click on specific power plants, I should be able to get information about them. 
do not appear that I'm able to do that with this one. Many of them you can. I also looked at Superfund sites. These are going to be showing us where all of the waste and hazardous materials are stored. This might be a good thing for thinking about where your C, your core, your B, your buffer, and your T zones are in terms of where you want to have your national park. So I see this area right here is a really good location for maybe some buffer or transitional zones. And maybe this would be more of a core area to protect. I also have looked at drought and moisture surplus levels. And this is going to be telling me what ecological conditions exist within my national park. And it looks as if I toggle between this and this that parts of this area right here are more severely affected by drought than areas down here. This might be a good area to focus in on having intact core areas only for the sake of making sure that there's enough land for good things like ecosystem services such as um, soil um, not eroding and having habitat available for species but also having um, enough space that we might be able to have water conservation without human interferences such as um, asphalt surfaces or landscape design or something that might impact um, whether or not water is stored here. So that is the overview of what I'm asking you to do for Monday. Start thinking about a location with different levels of data that tell you why you need a national park there and what things you might need to mitigate or remove or change. And then finally, what three species exist in your area that might be endangered that have some benefit. We will have a good amount of work time on Monday to complete this assignment, but I'm really hoping that you come in with a specific location, lots of maps, and good information about your species. If you open a tab and you start to load your map, do not get rid of it. It's a very hard to save this data. I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will see you next week.